they turn me up a little. Yeah. Hey, let me get a little more that they know who we at, man. Check the ratings. We got them up through the ceiling like elevators. House of Vets in the building. Go going crazy. This shit was made for television. Pass the remote, baby. Not going. Subscribe. Comment. Go live. Tell a, a friend to go and tell a friend. Make sure you tap in. Cause we at it again. It's all entertainment. Cause we stay entertaining. Yeah. We stay entertaining. Yeah. Hey, we stay entertaining. Hey, we stay entertaining. Hey, turn me up a little. Yeah. Hey, let me get a little more. That they know who we at, man. Check the ratings. We got them up through the ceiling like elevators. House of Vets in the building. Go going crazy. This shit was made for television. Pass the remote, baby. Not going. Subscribe. Comment. Go live. Tell a, a friend. To Hey, how are you doing? This is uh, Leo from the House of X, and if you could just explain a little bit about yourself and the table. Oh, what I got going on here? Okay, my name is Captain Zorik, uh, and I got a whole bunch of things going on here. Well, the first, uh, let me just start in here and work my way over. Okay. Okay, so, well, uh, Captain Marvel Culture is a project that I'm working on. It's a research project that's going to be a book, and I got a YouTube channel, and I give lectures on it. What okay. is that? Captain Marvel is the most important name of a superhero to follow in Western popular culture and history because unlike your Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, etc., who always who evolved, yeah. there have been no fewer than 20 different superheroes named Captain Marvel. Yes, they have. Reboots, and each one was created from scratch to serve the market of their day. Therefore, just to figure out who was Captain Marvel when and why, you have to go all the way back to the origins of, of comic 
of comics and graphic storytelling, magazines, comic books, publishing, superheroes, motion pictures, because the original Captain Marvel was the first superhero in a motion picture. Yeah. And you got to talk about trademarks and copyrights and women's rights and gay rights and the space race and the hippie movement and the anti-communist witch hunts of the 1950s. I'm not even kidding. That's not even exaggeration. That's not even hyperbole. That is literally true. It's all connected. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is... Um, I'm building up a mailing list so I can let people know about the progress of the project, um, you know, when I'm giving lectures and, and when the book's coming out, and as I go to agents and publishers, I can say, look how many people think this is cool. And I'm also selling these little one, two, and a half issues of a three-part miniseries that basically covers the history of the Captain Marvels, literally from the dawn of time until uh, the new century. <laughs> but we don't have time to go into that now because we move on. I also have a band. Uh, oh, wow. A Star Wars-themed rockabilly band called the Death Star Repairman. Okay. Uh, uh, I play harmonica and guitar, all three chords, and I got a friend who does washed up bass, and we just uh, 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 added to the team a a washboard percussionist, so we might as well call ourselves the star, the, the, the Death Star Washerman, but Repairman works just fine. <laughs> and so I got uh, two of my albums out here, the Death Star Repairman, Another Night at Most, Another Night at Most Eisley, and the Death Star Repairman, Cosmic Dust Bowl. We'll okay. be playing a couple of numbers um, during the costume contest, maybe like uh, We Built the Death Star, or Gotta Get Off of This Rock, or Stormtrooper Blues, or Vader's Lament, or Come On Lady Jedi, or something like that. Yeah. All right, then over here we got the mini comics. All right, see, um, my first love was uh, drawing comic books. That's when I got my degree in the uh, in, uh, School of Visual Art at. Oh, wow. And, okay. And uh, back before it was really a thing, uh, I figured out that, hey, all you have to do is go to a copy shop and you can make a comic book. Yeah. So I've been doing these mini comics since, since like, for like 30 years now. Oh, wow. Um, you know, and so these are among my latest. This one is based on uh, something that really happened uh, where I ran into an ex-girlfriend of mine back in medieval England and found out that she was uh, dating some guy that I never liked. Um, that was really awkward when we found out that we were all working together. Oh, um, wow. This one is a story about uh, a squire who winds up uh, having to face some hard choices in his life, both set in the Middle Ages. This is sort of like a coloring book, really, um, of uh, armor through the ages that I use as a sort of a guidebook in my lectures about the... Uh, the development of the concepts of chivalry in parallel with the evolution of King Arthur in okay. legend and story. This here is a book of cartoons and things that uh, were published in uh, uh, for the Society for Creative Anachronism. And these two over here <coughs> are was when I was involved with a little group, a uh, female wrestling group called the. Uh, Doom Maidens. I was trying to turn them into female action heroes, and they actually did a pretty good job. And uh, so, like, for instance, Kim Fu Yu and Jenny Rancid are, like, two, uh, two uh, time-crossed uh, um, uh, adversaries who fight in all sorts of scenarios. Um, and over here we have uh, Jolie Voltaire as the Pirate Queen and her apprentice, with uh, Vetiver Lane as the apprentice uh, being attacked by the Lord Gigundus. And um, each of these mini comics actually has in the back of it uh, a chapter of a story that a friend of mine wrote called. No, not this one. <laughs> the next one. Almost all of them. The Amazing Grendel Conspiracy. And it basically is who was Grendel. And these characters, Ken Fu Yu and Jenny Rancid, their continued exploits are in the video Combat Twister and the Further Battles of Kim Fu Yu and Jenny Rancid. You can see the, the, the drinking contest highlights from the uh, from the making of Combat Twister and a very special in interview with the late Joe Franklin on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Captain Zorik, Z-O-R-I-K-H, the only Zorik spelled that way in English on social media. Okay. And it was the making of that that inspired me to make Redemption, find out what you're worth. A, uh, a movie uh, it'll do for submission grappling what Bad News Bears did for Little League Baseball mm. alright and the Karate di Kid did for Youth Karate um, basically it's about uh, a conflict between a legit martial arts club and a uh, uh, dojo and an underground fight club that oh, wow. is discovered by 
this character named Captain Zorik, who may not have anything to do with me, who is, uh, um, oh fuck it, it's, it's, it's quasi-autobiographical. <laughs> Uh, and there's a YouTube channel for it, CZ Redemption, as in Captain Zork Redemption. It's easy yeah. to remember, CZ Redemption. And I got found all kinds of uh, uh, martial artists and stage combat artists and pro wrestlers and uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys and MMA fighters to be in this movie. Okay. And among them was a guy named D.A. West. Now, now remember that name because we'll get back to him. We move over to the video. Okay, before you go any further, let yes. me take a step back. Yeah. Talking about Captain Marvel, for those that don't yes. know, the movie had a female, but Shazam was named Captain Marvel at one point in time. My question to you is, which one do you like better, the male version or the female version, or do you have a preference? I like them for different reasons. Okay, okay now, you can't say the male and the female, because there were many male and many female versions okay. of the many Captain Marvels. I like the original Captain Marvel because I have, you know, as, as a, as a uh, retroist, yeah. Um, I, I always like to know what was the original and also the concept of a boy who could say a magic word and turn into a hero and it wasn't originally a boy in a hero's body yeah. it was a different personality yeah. a different person shared memories but uh, but Shared memories, but different consciousnesses, and no psychological torture because it was magic. Yeah. In a comic book. <laughs> so you know there was even a scene where they, they they would argue with each other. Damn it, Captain Marvel! This is dri you, this is you're driving me nuts. I need to get some sleep. Shazam! Oh, Billy, you've never been in love. You don't know what it's like to go out on a date. Shazam! Yeah, but you you're she's just a gold digger, and you're wasting your time. You know it was like that, and they would buy each other Christmas presents. <laughs> now, as far as Carol Danvers is going, uh, Marvel Comics current female Captain Marvel. She's had a long and uh, uh, tumultuous history, I'm going to say. Uh, originally, she was Ms. Marvel. For yeah. those who don't know, Miss is unmarried woman. Mrs. is married woman. Ms. is none of your damn business. Okay? So that's why it's Ms. Okay? Yeah. All right. Because that's how Vogue got her powers. Uh, or well, the other half of it, anyway. Well, um, the uh, the point being that she was actually marketed as the first feminist superhero, but uh, the way she was created, um, she was schizophrenic. When she was Ms. Marvel, she didn't know who else she was. When she was Carol Danvers, she didn't know that she was Ms. Marvel. So, and this was supposed to be to represent the uh, dichotomy of the female identity in the 1970s, blah blah blah. And I don't think it really worked. But lately. Um, when, when uh, Ms. Marvel, when Carol Danvers finally took the mantle of Captain Marvel, well, basically what she'd been doing and continued doing is saying, you know what, in the House of M, I was the greatest hero in the world. There's no, just because I'm no longer in the House of M, doesn't mean I can't still be the greatest hero in the world. Yeah. So she's always trying, she's always pushing, she's always... Yeah, she's just one step away from victory, but that doesn't mean she's not going to try to take that step. And so I like that aspect of her. And in the movie, I like the part where, I actually like the part, and there's a YouTube channel that says, this is what's wrong with her, and I say, no, this is what's right about her, is when Jan Rog is like, come on, no superpowers, no magic weapons, just you and me. And she's like, oh yeah, because she's rejecting the she's rejecting the male dominance paradigm of the stronger man doesn't have to etc etc. No, it's like no, it's, I got these superpowers. I got these superpowers. Boom, you know, and you're a bad guy. You know, I don't have to play your game because I am capable of achieving better things than your game will. I like that. All right, so that's that. So let me move over. All right, so. Um, now remember that name simply the best GA West. Uh, many years ago I joined this group called the Society for Creative Anachronism, a nonprofit educational organization dedicated to studying and recreating the fun parts of the Middle Ages. And after a few years of that I ran into some videographers in uh, yep, that's right. Um, <laughs> Uh, in, in Williamsburg back when it was the new when it was the new Bohemia and they said oh we want to make a video out of it we want to make a documentary and they made this documentary The Pensic War a video documentary they lacked imagination when it came to titles but uh, they made a rather nice documentary and uh, after a bunch of years um, I uh, I uh, um, decided to 
I got the rights to keep the footage, made an extended edition, put it on DVD, and these people look interested. Can we, uh... Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Before we were so rudely interrupted. Oh, by the way, I made the sale. Anyway, <laughs> so, Society for Creative Anachronism, the Pensac War is the biggest annual event of the year, and so these friends of mine... Uh, well, they became friends of mine, made this documentary, and uh, it was really popular, it sold like 400 copies, and, uh, okay. and uh, as the years went by, people would ask, hey, have you got any more copies, or, uh, or uh, they would say, no, I never heard of it, and so like 20 years later, things are going on in my life, and like I said, I had made... Redemption and Combat Twister and had gotten into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu through working with the two maidens female wrestling team that I managed with my ex-girlfriend. Well, now she's my ex-girlfriend, but that's another story. And so, uh, um, so I said, let me, let me make, it's been 20 years since this came out, let me make the 20th anniversary return to Pentec and let me take this guy, simply the best GI West. Uh, we were working together. I was his personal announcer at uh, indie wrestling shows in New England. Uh, oh wow! He was. Uh, I was. I created his uh, a YouTube channel for him. Uh, you know, uh, this guy named uh, this guy. I heard play music at Auto Shrunken Head. Did his theme song. Uh, but anyway, the uh, I'm the best man, yeah, for you. Anyway, so I took this guy, a pro wrestler, uh, life coach, you know, a uh, fitness pro, who never thought that he'd be interested in anything like the SCA, two of the biggest SCA events of the year, dropped him in the middle of it, and so what happened. And it went great, it went really great. And this is the video that shows how great it went. And would you believe that there are actually a lot of parallels between pro wrestling and the Society for Creative Anachronism? Well, buy this and you'll find out. Okay. But having done all that, now, I've been in this club for like uh, almost 30 years by this time. And I've done just about everything I realistically could do. When somebody found out about the World Championships of Medieval Armored Combat, known as the Battle of the Nations in Europe, and me and a whole bunch of other SCA people, mostly, decided to go out there. We formed a team, and it was the first American team to go to the Battle of the Nations. And I said, you know what? We'd better make a documentary about that. And so, I made U.S. Against the World. And that's me there. And at this event, I was the only guy in New York from New York on that team, on the first USA team to fight in Medieval Combat World Championships in Europe, the Battle of the Nations. And while I was there, I they had these things called uh, pro fights, which is like the singles matches they usually had, only more intense, more extreme, more punching and kicking and knocking you down after you've fallen over and that sort of thing. I was the first American to do one of those. And that must have been an awesome experience. It was, but what was horrible about it is we here in America don't know, did not know how to play the game. So we were over armoring ourselves. We had weapons that were too heavy. Um, the game, the, the fighting in the SCA is just weapon strikes only, one blow kill. Oh, wow. And in a game where you're allowed to punch and kick and wrestle and hit them from behind, it's like boxers in the UFC. Yeah. So, uh, well, we, we won the crowd. We won best team debut. One of our people won uh, best historical armor. But we didn't win the championship, and we won very few matches. We won a few of the five on fives that I was in. But, um, and you can see it in this. But uh, we went home, we watched the videos, we, you know, we, uh, we watched the videos, we hit the gym, we changed our diets, our fat guys got skinny, our skinny guys put on muscle, our asthmatic and our diabetic beat their asthma and their diabetes, and we actually started winning. And this, and uh, this is uh, their trip to a 200, 2000, and 15 World Championships, but what had happened was we didn't like the way the Russians were running the Battle of the Nations, so the United States and 15 other nations created the International Medieval Combat Federation, and this is the second of their World Championships. And so while this was only 90 minutes, and it's really not much more than a whole movie, although they got some lovely travel out of Warsaw, um, this is really more like a real documentary. I mean, you got every minute of every fight 
but we've got more interviews. We've got uh, interviews that actually give insight into the fighting and what you're seeing and how to make the armor uh, and why we do this. Yeah. That's a big thing, C getting to know why we do this. And so a few years later, in 2018, I got the contract to do another one. And here is, it was so big, so much footage. Um, it was a four day event. I wound up having to, this, as I said, this was about 90 minutes. This was three hours, right? Oh, wow. This, I just decided to make every day one disc. Oh. And I've gotten to two discs already, day one and day two. And That's a lot of discs. Yeah, and, give, and I'm sending them out, shipping them out to my uh, to my sponsors and contributors in a five disc set, um, so that I might do a fifth disc someday. But I've got day one and two in the box, you know. And uh, as I send it out to them, box one has this cover with scenes from what were what happened on day one. Yeah. And see, it says one of four. Okay. Day two says day one and two of four, because that way, when I sent them the disc, they could just put it in the box that I sent them yeah. and slip in a new cover. So in the end, they're going to have four discs and four covers. And this here poster here is just basically a promotional co poster. My company has watched this space. And this is just about how I create videos about, and I give lectures, in fact, on medieval martial arts in the modern world. Uh, New York Knights Combat and is the uh, website and uh, the YouTube and also the Facebook of the company that does that. But to finish it all up, let bring it home. Let's go back to where we began. As long as we're talking about posters, this baby, as you can see, excuse me, a little worse for wear, but these are all autographs of people who have worked on, either written, drawn, inked, edited, or about by writing about uh, one or another Captain Marvel. Um, we've got Jerry Ardway, Rags, uh, Peter David, Joe Rubenstein. Um, uh, Bob Wyacek, Mark Vogel, who wrote a book about uh, um, um, Kurt Schaffenberger, a comic, uh, a, uh, uh, an artist who's written a lot of Captain Marvels, Terry Austin, um, Mike Manley, uh, let's see, Alex Savia, Bill Sienkiewicz, is that Sienkiewicz? Who is that? Oh, uh, <laughs> Bob Paul, I'm sure I've got uh, Simon around here, Joe Giella, there's Jeff Smith, um, and some people who aren't with us anymore. There's Stan Lee. Okay. Yes, may he rest in peace. Yep. And there, there's Rich Buckler. Okay. And I think I've got. Yeah, there's Alan Cooperberg, C. Lee Aloha. Let's see. Joe Staten. But yeah, we got. So. I really ought to retire this poster, or, or seal it up, or do something to preserve yeah. it. Yeah, definitely it's, seal it. Yeah, but I, there aren't many people out there left that I need to sign this. Um, John Byrne, I gotta get John Byrne in here somewhere. But uh, yeah, I, uh, there's Simonson. Um, Joe, uh, what's his name? Uh, Starlin, Jim Starlin's in here, of course. Yeah. I think Sid Shores is in here. He died. Uh, what's his name? Um, Gene Colin's in here. He died. And I've got video also talking to these guys about their stories. That's why the Captain Marvel Culture YouTube channel exists. I'd love to say that I can that I'll make a documentary of it. And that is kind of awesome. And I'm going to ask him if he wants to be in the cosplay contest. All right. Yeah, so, definitely. Okay. So remember, folks, just to wrap this thing up and bring it home. We're not out of the woods yet. Clean up, cover up, call your loved ones because no one gets out of the world, out of here alive. And Captain Zorik is coming at you. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Enjoy. Tell a friend, make sure you tap in.